Welcome back to Linear Algebra. In this video, we'll introduce the concept of dimension. So if a vector space V is spanned by a finite set, we're going to call V finite dimensional. And the dimension of V, which we'll shorten to dim V, is the number of vectors in a basis for V. So for instance, if we take the dimension of the zero space, then of course this doesn't have any vectors in it, so it'd be zero. What about an Rn? How many vectors do we need in a basis for Rn? Well, we need n vectors. So if we have R2, we need two vectors to form a basis. What about polynomial space? So Pn. Well, if we remember, the standard basis for Pn is 1 t, t squared, all the way up to Tn. So we can see we need n plus 1 vectors. Okay, so again, Rn, we could use standard basis, which is just E1, E2, all the way up to En. And we can see here, so if we want to know the dimension of a space, we can just consult the standard basis. Okay, and again, zero would just be the empty set. So, here's a the theorem. If H is a subspace of vector space V, then any linearly independent set in H can be expanded to a basis for H. This should be, yes, expanded to a basis for H, and the dimension of H is less than or equal to the dimension of V. So, what this says is if we take a vector space V, let's draw this, and this is V, and we take some subspace of it, which would be H. If we have a set of vectors in here that are linearly independent, so let's say we have a bunch that go this way, then we can expand that set until it covers all of H, and that we're never going to get a dimension bigger than V. Okay, so let's start with a very simple case. What if H is just equal to the zero space, so the zero vector? Well, then what's the dimension of H? Well, we know this is just going to be zero, and this is always going to be less than or equal to V no matter what. So the dimension of H, if it's just zero, will always be less than or equal to the dimension of V. Okay, now let's consider that we have a set of vectors. So we have S, and this is going to be uh, U1 all the way up to say UP. Okay, so if this spans all of H, then we have a basis. Okay, but what if it doesn't span H? So if it doesn't span H, we want to remember this is linearly independent. So if not spanning, then what we can do is we can take our space, so U1 through UP. So these are all the vectors we have that are linearly independent. And we can add another vector, up plus 1, which is also linearly independent. So we can expand it. Okay, so we take these linearly independent vectors, and what we do is we add a new vector that keeps the set linearly independent. So now we have u1 all the way up to up plus 1, and this is still linearly independent. Okay, so if it spans now, then we have a basis. If it doesn't, so if not, then what we do is we just repeat the process. So we can keep repeating and repeating and repeating, and we expand it until we get a basis. So your question is, well, how do we know that the dimension of H is always going to be less than or equal to the dimension of V? Well, if we keep expanding, then eventually, we're going to reach a point where we have a basis. So because we're pulling vectors from V into our subspace H, if V has a set of say N linearly independent vectors, then the subspace can never get a set of linearly independent vectors that is greater than N. So it can have at most n linearly independent vectors. So this dimension of h will always be less than or equal to the dimension of v. So if h is v, so let's say that h is equal to v, 
Well, then clearly the dimension of h is going to equal the dimension of v. But h can never be greater than v, so the dimension of h is never going to be greater than the dimension of v. So that is the theorem. Okay, so now we need to talk about the dimension of the null, or the null space and the column space. So the dimension of the null space is going to be the number of free variables in the equation ax is equal to zero, while the column space is going to be the number of pivot columns in A. So let's take a look at this matrix A. So we have 1, 0, 3, 4, 6, 1, 2, 9, and this is augmented to 0, 0. Let's take a look here. Uh, the number of pivot columns. Well, what we can do is we can make, let's say, this 3, 4 vector. We can get rid of this, we can turn this to 0, and we can turn this to 1 with very careful multiplication and subtraction. But I won't exactly do it, but it should be known that it can be done. So what's going to happen is we're going to get two pivot columns, and we're going to get two free variables. So this means that the dimension of the null space is going to be 2, and the dimension of the column space is going to be 2. So what I do want to look at now is note that this is a 2 by 4 matrix. So we have A, and then of course we have the 0 vector here, but A is a 2 by 4 matrix. And we see that the dimension of the null space is 2, and the dimension of the column space is 2. So if we take a look at this number here, we can infer, well we can infer right now, that maybe the dimension of the null space and the dimension of the column space has to equal that number. So we're going to take a look at this claim later. We may disprove it, we may prove it, but uh, for now just think about that a little bit. Okay, so let's find the dimension of the subspace spanned by these four vectors. Well, the dimension is going to be the number of vectors that we need to form a basis. So right now I see three entries in each. So I'm thinking, okay, this is probably R3. So this is probably R3. So we're probably going to have the dimension equal to 3. Okay, well, we can't make this claim because this might not be all of R3. We might be looking at a subspace that is just a plane in R3 that goes to the origin. So what we'll do is we'll have to row reduce and see if we can find that one or two is a linear combination of the others. So we need to check for free variables. Okay, that's going to be 5, 2, 2, and 2, 1, negative 1. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we're going to take the uh, the second, sorry, the third row, and we'll add or we'll subtract two of the first. So let's write this out. So two minus two is zero. Negative one minus negative six is five. Two minus ten is negative eight. Negative one minus four is negative five. Okay. Now we'll take the first row at or I guess we're going to subtract 3 of the second row. So we're going to have 1, negative 3, minus negative 3 is 0. 5 minus 6 is going to be negative 1. 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 1. B0, negative 1, 2, 1. Then we're going to get, let's see, 5. So we're going to take row 3 and add 5 of the second row. So 0, 0, I'm going to add 10, so we get 2. I'm going to add 5, so we get 0. Okay, uh, we could keep continuing. So what we could do is we could divide the third row by 2 and get a 1 there. And just to make things super clear, let's do 0, 1. We'll add the third row, so this will be 0, negative 1. We're going to flip the signs of this. So this will become negative 2, negative 1. Then what we'll do is we'll add 2 of the second row to it. So we get a 0 there. And we get 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. So what we see here is that the vector v4 
is just equal to negative v1 minus v2. So if we take a look at our original, we see that this 2, 1, 1, which we'll do in pink. So this 2, 1, negative 1 is just equal to negative of the first. So negative 1, 0, 2, or sorry, negative 1, 0, negative 2. And then we subtract the second. So that's the same as taking minus negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So uh, this right here is a redundant vector, so we can remove it. Which means that these three vectors form the basis. OK. So this means that the dimension of, well, we'll just call this R3, is equal to 3. We can also say that the dimension of this set of vectors, which is called as b, is equal to 3. OK. So that was the dimension. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.